Oh, we're live, by the way, so stop dropping F-bombs. <laughs> <laughs> stop talking about, about Jack Dangerman and all the horrible things he's done. Is this a clean show, James? No. Oh. There's nothing clean about this show. Okay. So, hi. Well, I welcome everybody to my... It used to be weekly, and now it's sort of when I remember to do it. <laughs> Hangouts with James Fee. Uh, I've got Steve Coast of uh, Telenav now, I guess. Um, Telenav does what? Telephone navigation? Is that where the name came from? Or do you have to think about it? Crazy, right? Um, today is Friday, uh, so that means it's a short day for me. I'm taking a half day every Friday. What do you think of that? Can you even hear me, Steve? Did Steve freeze? Oh, no, he froze. Am I here by myself talking by myself? <laughs> oh, God, Steve just disappeared. Holy smokes, what happened? There we go. Steve, you back? Hmm. That's what you get for leaving Microsoft. Of course, you could probably hear me. One second, let me get him back in. Well, so it's Friday, and as I said, oh, there he goes. He left the group, and I've invited him back, and there he comes. All right, everything just froze, so I reloaded it. Yeah, don't hit that button. Sorry. Sorry, right? So <laughs> it's clearly what something that I did, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so you're so I've, as I was saying, you started working at Telenav, um, telephone navigation. I assume by the name. That's a really good question. It's always interesting when you come across companies to try and figure out whether they're camel case or not. Right? Who is it? Um, I don't. I think officially it's not. Right. But if you go far back enough, like Microsoft was camel case, I think. Yes, I think you're right. OpenStreetMap is camel case. State of the map know. is camel case. You know, I never remember which way you're supposed to do it. Whether when you do S O T M, whether it's supposed to be all capitals or S. And and I named the conference, and I, I don't know what it's supposed to be. <laughs> I always do it all caps because once I, my finger hits that shift key, yeah. I'm, I'm not lifting it off until I'm done. But every time I see somebody who knows what they're doing, they always the O is lowercase. Right. So so what are you doing at Telenav? Just working on OpenStreetMap. Oh, sorry. <laughs> what do you mean, sorry? <laughs> well, you're just like, what are you doing? Well, what do you think I'm doing? I'm working on OpenStreetMap. <laughs> <laughs> the same thing we try to do every day, Pinky. <laughs> uh, you, you, well, there you go. So, um... <laughs> right, take over the world. so by the okay, way, so... This, this stuff over here, that yeah. is not junk. I've been told that's junk in my office. It's not. That is highly valuable reams of paper for my large format printer. Because of like this thing right here. Yeah. Oh wait, hold on. Let me. There we go. Look at that. Of course, it's all washed out because of the light. But that's my GPS map of Phoenix, thanks to Steve Coast Kickstarter. Um, who I understand these are uh, GPS tracks that uh, he's stolen from everybody's uh, uh, GM car. <laughs> Is that where that came from? It came from space. <laughs> it's live, right? The GPS is live. I, I don't know. So, oh, let's go on. Well, since we're talking about reams of paper, and you still you're still doing this, right? I mean, people can go to a website and order their GPS. Yeah, you can still buy one of those prints at gpsartposter.com. Um, I still get quite a few orders. Unfortunately, I'm a little backed up with a couple of them, which is. Uh, Kind of annoying and disappointing because um, I worked pretty hard to get them all out as quickly as possible for the, you know, the main batch of them. Um, but yeah, they're still being made. I can make them up to four feet wide, something like that. And I actually have three right here that I don't know what I'm going to do with. They're sort of three feet by four feet, and they're mounted on foam board. Um, so that makes them essentially impossible to ship for any reasonable amount of money. Well, what are they? Maybe somebody really wants a... Uh... So here's oh. Chicago. 
Well, that's a nice one. Yeah, Chicago's nice because you've got that stark sort of image with the lake. Right, yeah, there you go. I got Chicago, uh, New York, and San Francisco. So, you know, sort of the left, middle, and right hand side of the country. Well, those should be popular cities. I mean, if you had like Milwaukee. <laughs> uh, well, actually, Milwaukee. People like Milwaukee. Like, uh, what's a city that nobody cares about in the United States? Uh, Omaha. Yeah, oh, hey, right, Omaha <laughs> or Cheyenne. Right. Um, you know, someone asked me, you know, how do you how do you get to Cheyenne? And I said, oh, you just fly into Denver and drive up. And they go, Cheyenne doesn't have an airport. <laughs> 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 I was like, no, well, they probably do, but who flies to Cheyenne? Right. Um, which is funny because I'm actually keynoting a GIS conference next week in uh, North Dakota, uh, Grand Forks. Let me just tell you, that's well, there's a lot of fracking fracking going on up there. You sure you don't want to wait for the winter to do that? Well, no. So here's the awesome thing: is I've been. This is the last state after I go to North or North North Dakota. I've been to every state in the country. Wow. Yeah. Well, North Dakota was always hard because there was really no reason to go there. Um, I mean, I know you're not really truly an American, so you don't understand That's this, right. but when they had the Dakotas, right, so North Dakota, South Dakota, they split it in half, and what they did is they put that line just north of everything that was interesting in the North, in the Dakotas. <laughs> so everybody in South Dakota got beautiful, you know, the, 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 the Black Hills, um, you know, all the cool uh, Mount Rushmore, all the great stuff, and then North Dakota is just like, it's like Canada's big toe or something. Um, right. Nothing really up there. So it wasn't now it's like well. it's like Saudi Arabia of North America now. So um, Saudi Arabia <laughs> of North America. Right. They export. I mean, United. States, I mean, we're self-sufficient in oil now. Give me a new car. I just, give me a big. Where are those Hummers? I did they they just kill that brand off? Sorry, we're self-sufficient in oil. Well, practically. Mm. We don't want terror oil in this country. <laughs> terror oil. <laughs> you ever see that? What's that? Uh, Sinclair oil. You've seen that? They have that up in uh, Denver, right? Sin you know the the dinosaur. The dinosaur. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, they used to advertise it was terror free oil because <laughs> they didn't want it from the Middle East. You know, because well, if you got to assume everybody from the Middle East is a terrorist, I guess. Um, except for the fact that you don't buy oil that way, right? <laughs> Right. It's a commodity, and you just buy it on an open market. Who the hell knows where the oil comes from? But I like this, James. We're sort of zero to controversial in the first five minutes of the. Of the well, why are we? Yeah, right. Are we here? So, so okay. So, since you don't have time to talk, um, let's. So you dropped this thing on uh, this morning called Map Club. Map Club. Yeah. What the hell? It's not even working for a while. What the hell? <laughs> Well, the idea is that, James, as I'm sure you understand, joining OpenStreetMap is a daunting proposition, right? Mm -hmm. There's a lot to learn. The community can be um, difficult to comprehend. <laughs> maybe, maybe Picking you know, your words very carefully, I got you. Difficult to comprehend. Um, and we got to the point where even key, important, useful people are leaving the mailing lists, right? And the mailing lists are one of the primary communication forums through OpenStreetMap, that and pubs, right? And I can't fix the pub problem. Mm -hmm. um, so when you have people leaving, what do you do, right? So maybe we could create a, so one way to think about this is maybe we could create a communication channel for OpenStreetMappers, new and old, that doesn't include trolls, doesn't include ridiculous amount of politics or ideology and just lets people communicate. I mean, what, what do you think of the mailing lists, James? Uh, I have them all set in my Gmail to mark as read, uh, skip the inbox. Right. So, one way to think about Map Club is why don't we, for some small amount of money, try and fix this problem, right? So, for $4 a month, that's it, you can join a mailing list of fellow OpenStreetMappers who tend to be... Um, on the more rational side, the more interested in getting things done side without spending uh, large amounts of time debating things. Now, debates are good so long as there's some sort of conclusion and then an action afterwards. But the problem when you're, um, sorry, the challenge when you're uh, volunteer-led is that 
uh, debates can go on for a very long time because people have infinite free time to debate things. There is no conclusion, and then because it's because you're volunteer led, it's very hard to go and take a decision and achieve something afterwards because you don't have the resources to go and do something. If the community decides, you know what, we want to make the map blue or whatever, right? Or we want a better mailing list, or we want faster servers, or we want to change the infrastructure so that it's not a decade old, or whatever those things are. You can't because the amount of work and time and effort would be too high, and often the work that's involved is kind of annoying and boring. And volunteers typically, this isn't always the case, but typically volunteers want to work on the shiny things and the fun things, right? Um, it's certainly not always the case because we have great volunteers who make the servers run all day long, right? Mm -hmm. And this admins, for example, who should be applauded for that. Um, there are some complexities about, you know, making trade-offs between uh, stability and innovation in OpenStreetMap as well. And so why don't we come together, pay a small amount of money, and then use that money to go and build the things that we want that volunteers in OpenStreetMap either don't want to do or can't do for lack of resource. And the idea isn't to replace OpenStreetMap or to um, replace any particular sub-project, but just to free up the people who want to go achieve stuff um, from these barriers to entry. So the real brainwave for me was actually at Stage of the Map, uh, Portland, no, San Francisco, I think it was San Francisco. Yeah, it must have been. When uh, two guys uh, from Seattle, Clifford and someone that I'm blanking on, did a talk about importing address data into OpenStreetMap for King County in Seattle. King County includes Seattle, I think, itself. Mm -hmm. um, and they just, the first thing they talked about was the four or five months, I think it was, that they spent debating with people about whether they should be allowed to do an import and how they should do it and what particular brand of importing they should do. And they they had a lot of time and energy which let them put up with this four months of debate before actually achieving something, before going and doing it. Just like, wow, we must, you know, how many people are we losing by putting them through this, um, these series of tests before they can do anything, right? So what if there was some sort of community that you could go to where just trying new things was completely fine, and we didn't have all of these barriers. Um, and those barriers, by the way, are often there for a good reason, because you need to maintain the integrity of OpenStreetMap, and um, there's community norms, and there's ways that things have been done, and so on. But it, it slows down innovation a lot, right? And personally, I want to get OpenStreetMap completed within my lifetime, right? So we need to do addressing and routability information, like turn restrictions and stuff. Um, so I'm rambling a little bit, and I'll ramble one little bit more. Think geocaching.com, right? Yeah. You pay, I, don't, I think it's $30 a year, something like that, and you pay for a group of people. Geocaching is a company, Groundspeak, I think it is, right? And they have, like, I don't know, 30 or 40 people in Seattle. And your $30 a month pays for those people to make the database work, to make the website nice, to answer support queries, um, all of those things that OpenStreetMap actually doesn't do, right? Um, so could we build something similar? It's an experiment. Maybe maybe it'll work. Maybe. Let's <laughs> throw the throw. Oh, okay, so what's a good example of something you'd like to see attacked first? I mean, addressing clearly is something you mentioned. Is that a pretty right. good place to start? So importing data is not particularly fun and it's kind of hard. But the, a lot of that data is out there, right? For, mm. So let's take the United States. There's 3,000 ish counties. Um, it'd be kind of hard, but we could go to every single county, get the data, and import it. And that's sort of been happening with an OpenStreetMap, right? But what if we could pay someone to do that, right? And just solve that problem for us. And then we could go about actually fixing the address data, um, because address data is just incredibly painful to go and collect uh, all by yourself. That would be one. Um, what it, you know, all the little things that people are frustrated with um, are what I want to fix. Okay, so let's let's take that Seattle um, 
point you made up. So let's say I had, for Maricopa County, I had all the addresses. I want to import them. Normally, I'd go to the email list, say, hey, I'm going to do this. What do you think? Da, 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 da. What you're saying is I can do this through Map Club. Uh -huh. Map Club would represent me. Or do I don't even care. We just Map Club just does it, and it gets done and for the greater good. I mean, what's... Well, we could think about it this way. We could have another server which looks just like OpenStreetMap, right? You point all of your tools at that, and you import all of your data into there, right? And yeah. then there's other people doing the same thing. Like, I would like to import Douglas County in Colorado, for example. Then we can work on those imports. And imports are this, um, we should make clear for the audience, imports are a big controversial topic in OpenStreetMap. There's no actual data to support this at all, but there's a feeling that uh, imports kill community. Right. Um, there's no data either way because, well, the, I won't get into it. There's just no data to support that. Um, <laughs> wouldn't it be nice if we could have some sort of staging server where it was perfectly fine to do a bunch of imports? We can import them all in. We can spend the time massaging the data, fixing it up, um, and then once it was ready and it was deemed clean, we could then import it to OpenStreetMap. Right? Instead of the first barrier being uh, convince anonymous people on the internet that you're trying to do something good, right? which is a yeah. hard barrier, what if the first step was throw the data in a server and let's see what we can do with it? And then step two or three, we can go and massage the data, bring it up to the quality standard required and so on, and then pull it into OpenStreetMap proper. Right? Um, it's just about removing the barriers that people have uh, to getting involved in OpenStreetMap. So part of that is communication. Part of that is uh, not knowing where to start. So wouldn't it be good if there was decent training courses in OpenStreetMap, right? Yeah. Wouldn't it be good if, if you could pay, I don't know, three, five hundred dollars and you could send your staff for a training day on OpenStreetMap or something, right? All of these things that need to be solved, the, the, the foundation, because it's very vocally uh, decided multiple times that it's going to be volunteer only, which is not my point of view, right? If we could do all this through the foundation, we would, right? But we've tried. <laughs> I've been shot down many, many times by trying to either raise funds or hire people. Um, it's always been a very tough thing. I think we've only ever hired one person in OpenStreetMap, and that was uh, Andy Allen to work on uh, the light, some of the licensing technical work. And I can't tell you how painful that was, you know, to hire someone. It's just about making this stuff a lot easier because a lot of these decisions that were made were not necessarily the... They, they might have been good back then, but they're not necessarily any good right now. Right? So is this just... So let's, I have a community question here. Um, are communities not a good way to handle data projects like this for at least this kind of stuff? I mean, where do you see this line of the community, the email list, people talking about stuff and wanting to improve the map and this, I guess, other idea that people want to get stuff done. I mean, those clearly well, have been... There's two things here. Right? So, of course, the community is incredibly valuable and very good at a whole bunch of things. But there are things the community is not good at, right? Yep. Addressing would be one of them. Uh, routing information would be one of them. OpenStreetMap is really stalled at becoming a display map from the community's point of view, right? Mm -hmm. If you look at it, the, the growth has been fantastic, the map looks beautiful, but it's just stopped there, right? And the question is, could you motivate the community to go and collect address data or turn restrictions and those other things that are going to make OpenStreetMap truly competitive to proprietary maps? Well, the answer so far has been no. And then the other part of this is, you know, what does a community mean? So. When you want to achieve something in OpenStreetMap, really there's only a couple of people who decide what happens in the project, right? It's not about convincing a community, it's about convincing those one or two people and uh, whether or not they're going to decide to do something or not, right? When you get to the size of OpenStreetMap, it's very hard to do bold things. Um, just look how long and complicated and hard it was to get ideas and editor into OpenStreetMap uh, and look at the debates on the mailing list after people, after ID was actually um, implemented on the on the website itself. Um, so, I don't know, it's tough. Okay, so, I mean, look, did you, oh, let me go ahead. One more thing. You want to do something bold, right? So, 
I have this bee in my bonnet I have for a long time. A bold thing to do in OpenStreetMap would be, I think we discussed this before, is to not show roads that don't have address data, or to put that a bit clearer, only show roads in OpenStreetMap which have address data associated with them, or a tag that says, hey, there aren't any addresses on this, right? So freeways, you'd mark every freeway and say, hey, this freeway off-ramp doesn't have an address, doesn't have any houses yeah. on it, right? If you were to do that, instantly most of the map would go completely blank, right? Mm -hmm. um, that would be a huge motivator for people to go and add address data, because as soon as you're starting to add addresses, um, the those roads would start to pop up, and it would be just like the beginning of OpenStreetMap, starting from a blank canvas, and there'd be this huge incentive to go and add data, right? And a huge sense of accomplishment and achievement that, you know, hey, I added the, all the buildings on that road, and now the road is on the map, right? It's basically impossible to do anything bold like that anymore, right? The, the way of thinking just won't allow that. That's if, if, if I had still retained control, that's what I would do, those kinds of bold things. Um, that would go and fix stuff. But instead, we have just infinite debates about, you know, r relatively pointless things. Um, and so Map Club is an, is an attempt to try and free up some of that innovation and time and effort. So did you, pre I mean, you had a talk this morning at State of the Map. Did you talk about this at all yet, or? Yeah, I did. Um, How did it go over? I don't know. Probably not very well, but it's... Um, in, in some ways, it's preaching to the wrong choir, right? Um, and in others, it, it was just kind of tough because it was 3 o'clock in the morning here, and I was doing a sort of interview thing with Hank um, instead of a talk. Uh, so I don't know. We'll have to see. I mean, I can tell you that people are actually signing up, um, and I can tell you everyone I've bounced it off of has been positive. Um, there is a lot of frustration. Now, the frustrations that I see might be different to the frustrations that some of the people who are joining see, right? They're joining for different reasons. Um, but that's cool. We can find a way to, you know, to help to help everyone here. Yeah, I mean, full disclosure, I signed up yesterday, so <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> looking forward to my T-shirt. Um, yes. So I can be in the map in the map club. Um, so, I mean, I guess what's your, so people are signing up, I mean, what are the next steps? I mean, obviously, you know, it's a organization, I mean, where do you, what is the first kind of things, leave it open to what people want to do, or do you have an idea? Well, of course I have an idea, but it's a completely different animal from OpenStreetMap, because the difficulty with OpenStreetMap, when you have a set of volunteers, and you say, hey, what do you want to do? We have like a hundred crazy different ideas and no one to do them. When you have customers who are paying, you know, four or nine dollars a month, um, you have to listen to them, otherwise they go away, right? Mm -hmm. um, and you have to provide value. So it's really to me very similar to OpenStreetMap. It's about listening to people, doing what seems to make sense and then iterating. Um, but being able to do it with paid memberships just changes everything, right? Because that barrier to entry means you get a very different set of people that are involved in that community. I mean, my past experience is if people are paying for a service, they're much more likely to be uh, patient, they're much more likely to be understanding about what's going on, um, and give much more valuable and useful feedback than, than people who are getting something for free. Um, well, it looks like people want to know the URL to Map Club. It's mapclub.com, right? Mapclub.com. Yeah. So sign up early, sign up often. Tell your friends. <laughs> what a cliche. <laughs> 100 of your favorite friends. Yeah. Um, are we going to have mugs? Because you have that sexy Microsoft mug you keep drinking out of. Are we going to have I a do. Map Club? It's actually a really good mug. Is that a mug so when you're on your sailboat that it doesn't tip over? <laughs> right? Isn't that why those things are wide on the bottom? A sailboat in Colorado. That's about as useful as a chocolate fire guard, isn't it? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, well, who knows? I mean, so, okay. Touche. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you're going down on your snowboard. and <laughs> Desert sailing. Yeah, do they do that. They do that. At, well, I guess more it's Utah and um, Nevada, the flat. Yeah. 
all that stuff. So, all right, so that's, so that's pretty cool. So people seem, at least on the IRC, to think it's a great idea. Um, well, I hope so. Except, except for Frank. Well, Frank W. thinks it's a great idea because he can pay forward up bucks to, to be the only troll. Um, <laughs> well, that's the thing. The other way of looking at this is you can't fire volunteers, right? So one of the reasons that it's it's impossible to remove trolls from OpenStreetMap is, and, and it's not unique to OpenStreetMap, it's lots of no. different things. Is that everyone's a volunteer? You need consensus. Um, everyone gets like a second chance, then a third chance, then a fourth chance, then a fifth chance. And by the that time, half the mailing list is left already, right? Yeah. But when you have customers, um, you know, you, you can fire customers if you want to. Yeah, that's true. Um, here's an interesting question: uh, Do you see Map Club eventually forking OSM? <sighs> no. I mean, I. In the universe of possibilities, right? Everyone gets run over by a bus tomorrow in OpenStreetMap or something, right? Then sure, it might be a nice vehicle, but that that's not the that's not the aim. the The aim is just to free up resources that are otherwise um, slowed down, right? The way to think about it is, you know, you can go use OpenStreetMap's mailing list for free, and you may or may not get value, and you may or may not have to uh, debate everything infinitely. Or, you know, for just $4, everything can become much more smooth, much more rational. Um, and then some of the other things we're trying is there's a 1-800 number on the website, right? Because this isn't... Um, it's a kind of a super interesting thing. What if there was a 1-800 number where you could just get help with OpenStreetMap, right? Does that ring your phone? Like, if I call that number right now, am I going to hear the phone ring in that office? I think you will, actually. I'm... I'm very worried because now... All right, everybody, go to mapclub.com and <laughs> call Steve right now. We'll see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> um, but luckily, it's a soft phone, so I can actually turn it all off. Um, <laughs> because there's lots, of people, there's, there's lots of people... This came out of running OSM+, Plus, right? There, there are lots of people who would just like to be able to go to someone and get an answer about something, right? And right now, mm -hmm. if you have a question about OpenStreetMap, let's say you're a business... The way you get an answer is you go to the wiki or the mailing list, which are very uh, confusing, and you're not going to get a single answer, right? Um, wouldn't it be good if there was a single point of contact which just gave you, you know, simple, single answers? Um, and being able to call someone has got to be the ultimate way of, of getting an answer. Getting help, yeah. Uh, here's a question. Um, do you have to participate uh, to give you money? Um, they just want to help out, but they aren't sure they actually update the map or going to update addresses? I'm confused by the question. I mean, well, so we were, we've been talking about the example of um, uh, importing data, wanting to get do things, want to update the map. What if they're a user of OpenStreetMap? Uh -huh. Is there still a place for them in Map Club? Well, if you want free, there's already OpenStreetMap, right? That's That's the way I'm looking at it right now. Maybe that's not the right way of looking at it, but if I'm going to be able to achieve anything, I need money to go do that, to go pay people to go do whatever it is we want, right? Mm -hmm. um, and four dollars is not a lot of money a month, right? No. It's less than the interest you're you, you're losing due to inflation on your bank account, right? I'm sure. So. <laughs> well, okay. So the I you know I guess the meat of it is is. You know, you can donate. I mean, it's not really a donation to Map Club because Map Club is a—it's not a nonprofit, right? I'm—I'm I'm yeah. leaving that open. It might make okay. sense as a nonprofit. It might make sense as a for-profit. Um, if you can put together a nonprofit well, um, like Hot, for example, the humanitarian Open Stream Up team, they seem to be pretty functional, right? And they achieve things. Um, there are other nonprofits which seem pretty non-functional. Um, so I'm just keeping it open because I want it to achieve something, that's all. And Interesting. Maybe, sense, maybe it doesn't. Well, uh, so so clearly it's one of these things where we'll know what it's like in a year. <laughs> right. You know, I mean, so you're involved. Anybody else involved with the kind of management team yet? or? Well, there's a difficulty. So when I ran... OSM Plus, that conference, a couple of board members from the OpenStreetMap Foundation helped me, um, gave me feedback and so on, and I acknowledged that on the website. And they got all kinds of hate mail for doing that, right? Now, you were at OSM Plus. It was a great event, very positive. 
Well, hold on. Yeah, I, I, good time. You know, this is my very biased opinion, right? Um, they got hate mail and were asked to resign and all this kind of stuff. So a lot of a lot of people just don't want to want their name out there. Um, and there's a lot of people who, you know, at Sotom today who think that OSM Plus was a bad thing, right? Little do they know that they're surrounded by people at Sotom who went there and paid for it and made it all happen. Um, so a fair number of people want to keep their name out of the limelight, and that's fine by me. Yeah, a couple questions. Um, monthly recruit, uh, recurring billing is pretty tough to pitch. Um, you can accept uh, yearly or uh, lifetime memberships. Is that really the the thrust of the question, or is it? Um, the, the I don't know. It's Glenn. It's Glenn Latham. So take it as you will. Um, what you're saying. Um, I could make probably it from easy. an organizational standpoint, it might be. I just want to make person. it a no-brainer. Like to me, four dollars a month is a no-brainer to tr to try something, right? Because you can always cancel it. Right? If you try it for a couple of months, it doesn't work. You just get a PayPal and you hit cancel. Done. Yeah, that's true. Um, is Map Club worth 50% of what I'm paying for Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question. I think the answer is yes. I mean, Absolutely. If you, if you look at the amount of time that people spend on OpenStreetMap, right? Um, and the amount of money that they spend all in. It's a huge amount of money. Pe people think it's free and they think, um, uh, you know, there's, and they confuse that with value, right? Mm -hmm. If you're spending a couple of hours a week or, or more, which is a lot of people are, um, or even a couple of hours a month, that's, that's a huge time investment, right? You only have to multiply that couple of, couple of hours by whatever you're paid to figure out how much, how much value you're investing in OpenStreetMap. Um, there's a world of difference, right, between paying zero for something and paying a penny for something, right? That's a quantum leap there. Um, and so, if people are really having trouble over four dollars a month, then you know, arguing on the mailing list about socialism is for you, right? Whereas Open Street, you know, whereas Map Club, we're trying to do something more, right? Yeah. All right. Here's a couple of people want to know: Is Map Club backed by Telenav? Um. No, no. I we we started building this quite after OSM Plus, which is God four months ago now, five months ago. I forget how long ago. Uh, so no, it's it's been going for a while. Is Netflix worth twice the what you'd pay for Map Club? <laughs> That's a better question. Uh, is is Netflix uh, kind of the 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 monthly fee? Well, I mean, I Pandora, right? That's like a dollar ninety nine a month or something like that. I mean, yeah, and Map Club doesn't have advertising yet. Oh, yeah, yet? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> All right, so, well, here's Glenn. He's getting back in his question. I'm just saying it sounds simple, but history shows that a monthly billing isn't the best sales model. I'm just saying. I, well, you drop look, few, it's all an experiment. I'm open to yeah. ideas. If there's some better way of doing something, you know, let's do it. <laughs> Right, if you want to pay fifty bucks a year, raw, right ahead, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I'm very happy to do that too. I mean, it's it's to me the this the way we solve the problem doesn't matter, right? The the problem I want to solve is communication in OpenStreetMap, it's addressing and it's navigability data, right? Yeah. Now, the existing ways of doing things don't appear to be working. Loads of people are leaving the mailing lists, addresses are kind of getting entered, uh, importing is this big controversy for no particular reason. Um, navigability data is uh, hard to collect and hard to get in there and it's very slow to be put in. And there's all kinds of subtleties as well um, with that. And so Map Club is just one way of solving it. And if it solves it, great. If we need to change the solution, we change the solution. I'm very agnostic about this. Yeah. Um, someone wanted to know if the community reaction to the OpenStreetMap Plus was so negative, aren't you worried the commercial thrust of Map Club will taint the perception of its efforts with the OSM community? Um, well, hold on. There was only a negative reaction from certain people, right? Lots of people in the community thought it was very positive, right? Like everyone who showed up, 
like I didn't force 150 people to show up to that conference, right? I mean, why, why don't you talk about it, James? Because I'm so biased because I ran it. What did you think? Well, I, I, okay, so, I mean, I was there. I uh, spent a whole day uh, in the Marriott talking about OpenStreetMap and what we wanted, and, you know, it kind of highlights a little bit what you've been saying. It's like this is very difficult from a business standpoint to work with OpenStreetMap. Um, philosophically, I've got no problem with the community, um, but when I need to get work done, I don't have time to debate uh, the aspects of Karl Marx with someone from Europe or someone from uh, New York City. Um, I just want to get stuff done. And, um, you know, as I, t I think I t I've told you many times, I used to be an OpenStreetMap Foundation member, um, but I let that lapse because I just couldn't deal with it anymore. Right. So, yeah. And that's a shame. It is a shame, right? Because right. I want to be involved. I want to do something. Every time I want to do something, I get involved with the email list. I got some guy coming up with some crazy idea of why what I want to do has nothing to do with anything. Right. Um, you know, and it's like, what does it matter? The map, the map, the visual map, the slippy map has nothing to do with the data behind it. I mean, it does, but stuff that I want to do has really no bearing on the slippy map. I don't care how it's represented on the slippy map. Right. But there's, as you said, there's such focus on the slippy There's map. multiple communities here, right? We've done very, very well at the free and open part of the community, right? OSM Plus was not aimed at the free and open community. It was aimed at the, trying to figure out how to get businesses more involved. And it turned out it was very successful, right? And as I said, you know, I didn't force all those people to show up. I didn't hold them at gunpoint, right? In fact, they paid to come, right? Yep. Um, and that section of the community thought OSM Plus was fantastic. I got, I got nothing but positive feedback from people who actually showed up. The only negative feedback I got was from people who didn't come, right? Yeah. And if there is this perception that OSM Plus competes with Stay the Map, but just not really. Um, we, you know, I was part of, first of all, I founded Stay to the Map, right? <laughs> Second of all, I, I was there when we tried, we've been trying to do business days at Stay to the Map for a long time, and we could never make it quite work, right? This is why we run OSM Plus. And it's not like OSM Plus excluded anybody. We didn't say you can't come, right? I didn't refund any tickets. People could have come if they wanted to. Mm -hmm. um, so I reject this notion about you know, the, there's a single community because there just isn't. There's like uh, disparate sets, right? There's this, first of all, there's like supposedly 1.3 million accounts, right? 70% of those never read it. So who are they? What's that community, right? Yeah. And then there's lots of people like you who have joined become, um, I don't know what the right word is, disenfranchised or upset <laughs> or uh, uh, disillusioned or yeah. something like that, who have since since got disengaged, there's a good point, good word, disengaged from OpenStreetMap, right? How do we get someone like James Feedback involved in OpenStreetMap, right? Because you have, you have all, lots of people who have lots of skills and experience that would be super valuable to make OpenStreetMap better, um, but you've unsubscribed from the mailing list, you know, how, where do you even begin? Yeah, that's true. Um, someone wants to know uh, where to go. My eyes are getting bad. How will keeping the mailing list high signal to noise be accomplished? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I have some guesses, one of which is moderation. Um, so just not letting emails through that are... Um, low signal to noise. Another is, um, my personal belief is that just by charging $4, you, you, it, it's a completely separate set of people that will join this mailing list. Um, when you know the other people on there are spending money to, to listen to what you have to say, and you're spending money to say it, um, I, I think the quality of the conversation is going to be completely different. I mean, I might be wrong, but that's my supposition. Um, another is, you know, if we get trolls on there, we can just fire them and I can refund their money. You know, that's the worst case scenario. Yeah. Well, I hear you. Um, what other questions are? Oh, people are saying I give it a chance. Um, people are saying I think OSM Plus is a good idea. Um, Four dollars a month is harder to sell than five thousand dollars a year of corporate subscription to OSM support. I mean, I, again, that's something. If corporations want support and they're willing to pay for it, something Map Club sure, can address, I, right? I agree. It's all about starting somewhere, right? So I, I, I like 
I like the comment that it's it's worth a try because that's all I'm doing, right? It's worth a try. Maybe it won't work. If if people have a better idea for how we fix the mailing list in OpenStreetMap, I'm all ears, really, right? If yeah. If have a better idea how we get um, get some of these things solved, you know, but just waiting for volunteers to do it, I don't think is the best mm. way, right? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. That's. Uh, yeah. Four dollars. Come on. It's worth. Right. It. Well, I mean, I, I think you've and you said this a bunch of times. Is one of the things you have to do is just start. Um, talking about starting. Yeah. Doesn't get you anywhere. Just right. do it. I know you do this a lot with some of your stuff. Someone asked a little bit about your resume app, um, uh -huh. which we can get on in a little bit. But it's sure. kind of the same thing. We just got to throw something out there and see what happens. Um, sort of the yeah. same thing here. And so I would love Map Club to do lots of things, right? I would love it to provide uh, really nice summaries of OSM activity because we we can't all spend all day on the mailing list tracking all of the things that are happening now on OpenStreetMap because it's growing so fast and there's so many new tools and services. Um, there are some uh, volunteer-led um, project summaries now, um, but wouldn't it be great if there were much more in-depth ones, right? Um, it would be great if, if we provided um, much 24-7 support, right? It'd be great if, you know, all of the things that we're going to find out by people calling that 800 number, I hope, it'd be great to solve all of those problems, but we have to start somewhere, and so the mailing list seemed the simplest, uh, cheapest, and easiest thing to start with. Yeah, someone, someone just pointed out that you can make a nice 1-800 number with seven letters of Map Club. Yeah, I tried. <laughs> no? What does it go? Did you call the number? See Sorry, what... no, I haven't, actually. It's a good question. I actually met a guy who, uh, in Seattle who started a company leasing 1-800 numbers. Hmm. Amazing. Like, that's a business. <laughs> Still, I, I was trying to think. Like, I mean, like 1-800 flowers. I mean, <laughs> I just, uh, it's a website. It's not a number <laughs> people call anymore. Uh, but 1-800 Map Club, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So people are blog. Uh, I guess Glenn's going to blog about it. So those people seem interested in. It. I guess one of these things are, you know, let's see what happens. Um, right. uh, you know, I signed up yesterday. I'm looking forward to it. Um, people, a lot of people talk about imports. So I guess that's probably a, a first thing that everyone wants to do is importing. Um, Imports are one, right? And so yeah. you know, for very good reasons. Open well, for some good reasons. Parts of OpenStreetMap don't want imports, right? Mm -hmm. um, but instead of this just being a binary, you know, yes or like no to imports, right? Um, it would just be nice if we had some halfway houses, some intermediary points, right, where we could do some imports and just see how good it was. Yeah. Here's an interesting question. Someone worries about the situation where Map Club uh, commissions data for import, and OSM simply says no. Um, um, well, we're already at that point. Right? Yeah, I was going to say that's... <laughs> I was saying already says no to pretty much everything, right, that, that someone wants to do. Yeah, there are, you know, I, I guess, you know, if enough people are wanted, you know, organized, I mean, that's the thing, you got to get organized to get something, you know. Right. One person isn't, you know, isn't going to stop you from doing something with OpenStreetMap because it's a community, but if a bunch of people want to get something done and they're organized, they can get things done. Right. Um, you know, I and think so Jason, after, Jason Birch on IRC afterwards says, Mac Club could offer enhanced services, geocoding, routing, etc. Uh, don't know, those are things are paid for. Being customer-led means that we can provide all those things later on, right? But you just got to start somewhere. The, the tough sell I have is convincing people now that there's going to be anything down the road, right? Yeah. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people are going to be involved already to offer those kinds of services. Um, right. You know, they're not going to want to give money to organizations that can put them out of business. <laughs> Esri already takes your money as a business partner and tries to put you out of business. Um, <laughs> did I say that a lot? Uh, it's supposed to be in her monologue. To me, there's um, a gap, right? There's a gap between where the OpenStreetMap Foundation ends as a volunteer organization, and they have limited resources to achieve anything, right? And then where companies like Mapbox begin, right? Mm-hmm. Mapbox is primarily right now, you know, focused on the display map portion because that's the the best where OpenStreetMap is. It's a great display map, right? So they provide a bunch of great services like tiles and blah blah blah, right? That we're all familiar with. 
But there's a gap between the two where um, it would be good if there was some solution in between, right? Do we want Map, Mapbox exclusive mailing lists? Well, probably not, right? But we know that the foundation is not uh, is not really working for communication for the mailing list either, right? So it's sort of filling that hole. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. Map, Map Club doesn't want to compete with Esri or Mapbox, I'm sure. No, no, no. Right? It's. I mean, I guess what is a a good example of a similar organization out there? I mean, I guess if I think about it, I could think of one. Have you identified other ones that maybe you're Wanting to emulate a little bit, or is this sort of more organic than than that? I think there's good analogies, like back to geocaching. Geocaching is a great analogy, right? A lot of people don't even realize that geocaching is a, a large for-profit organization, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it provides a whole bunch of value to people, and I'm sure they get licensing fees from Garmin. I mean, that's my guess where the revenue comes from, plus uh, those $30 a year memberships. Um, I don't know. It's an experiment. Yeah, yeah. Um, someone wants to know if you're going to move to uh, San Francisco now. Probably not. You got horses, right? I don't know. You know, it would be fun to live in the Bay Area again. Um, there are a bunch of pros and cons. Um, one of the one of the cons is the cost compared to Colorado. One of the cons is being in the echo chamber, um, it's great to visit, right? It's like it's like Disneyland. When I first yeah. moved to San Francisco a few years ago, a friend of mine said, uh, "California isn't America, and San Francisco isn't California." Um, <laughs> and I I think that's a good summary, right? Yeah, yeah, it's the reality. I mean, you you do, uh, you know. Uh, someone told me, God, who was it? I, I think it was uh, Steve CP told me this. He goes, he doesn't like to go to conferences in San Francisco anymore. Um, because they're so hard to, you know, there's no reality there uh, right. for technology conferences. It's kind of right. good to get out of there so people are sort of thinking about things more realistically as opposed to, um, you know, the hippest thing that happens along there. So Exactly. Uh, like, so I was talking to a friend of mine who, who lives there and he's trying to do his own startup stuff, and he's telling me about all these new services that he uses, like, Steve, have you heard of this app? Or have you heard of that website? <laughs> and some of them are really useful. Like he, he was giving a website where you could just type in a few bits of information and it would spit out a company for you, fully formed in Delaware, click a few buttons. I forget what the company name was called, right? Mm -hmm. um, a bit like LegalZoom, but for the yeah. Bay Area, right? Um, <laughs> and if you live in the Valley, you get sucked up in all of this, this stuff. Um, and it's really fun. I mean, I did it for a few years, but it it's much uh, cheaper and easier to just visit occasionally, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just get the highlights of the stuff that worked out. Um, and it's you know I'm way beyond the that thing of um, all the annoying twenty year olds running their Y Combinator companies, uh, thinking they're going to be millionaires. <laughs> That's funny. Okay, so let's let's hit on that. Um, the resume uh, app. How's yeah. that going? Uh, went incredibly badly. So it's very hard to find um, to target customers who are trying to hire people, right? Mm -hmm. That's what I found. It's expensive and difficult to target people who would use the service. That's the so, idea. I mean, here I'm, I'm at a big multinational Fortune 500 big company, URS Corporation, and I'm trying to hire some devs. Um, there's a process that I have to do, and there's only right. certain services I can use. You know, and I was thinking, oh man, it'd be kind of neat to to do this, but it's like, no, I have to use this service, this service, this service, this person to sign off on it, all these things. Right, and presumably your so HR staff want to keep their jobs, right? So, and they're also going to be risk averse, right? So let's put it nicely. First, firstly, they're going to be risk averse; they don't want to try new things. And secondly, anything that's that's even hinted at competitive of what they're doing or making things more efficient is, is going to be a tough sell. Mm -hmm. So large companies are, are good targets because you get this high volume of people that they're trying to hire, right? Um, unfortunately, for those reasons, it's hard to get them on board with something like sort people. Um, so what you can try and do is target uh, much smaller organizations, but then they're everywhere and very hard to find and target. Yeah. So, 
what do you say? I mean, is, is this is this project dead? Is it on hold? Is it um, somewhere in between dead and on hold? Unless you got any ideas for how I can revive it. Oh, a couple of people were interested in it, so I guess if but those that were on the... were interested enough to sign up or pay any money, that's the Well, that's just it, right? I mean, that's the hardest, as you said, that's the hardest thing you do is get people to pay. Yeah. Um, but people who pay are vested in the company or the, yeah. the, the, the service. Um, so I, I thought it was a great idea, and in fact, I would love to use it, except... My hand is tied like right back here. <laughs> <laughs> I can't, can't get it out. <laughs> Yeah, the forms I have to fill out to hire two people is... Wow. I'm sorry. Yeah, hey, you know, you do what you do. You know, I've got another... They gave me this nice little plant right here when I joined. Look at that. <laughs> With a little note saying, thank you for joining. Wow. And I don't take care of it, and it's so big and green, it's taking over my, my, my uh, corner office there. It's like, that's sort of me gardening in a nutshell. If I don't touch a plant... It does well. If I try and actually water it or take care of it, it dies well, like that. You know, if a plant can survive Arizona, it's going to survive the apocalypse, right? So, Well, that window right there in the afternoon probably gets to be 150, 200 degrees. Um, right, in January. Yeah. <laughs> it was 112 yesterday here in September. Yeah. Good times. You should come down. We could uh, hang out. and. Uh, Absolutely. Did you see the Broncos game? What the hell? <laughs> Though I did like uh, the, the linebacker that dropped the ball right before he crossed the end zone. That was classy. <laughs> you know, it's... I mean, then again, you guys won by like a thousand points, so what does it matter? Um, right. But <laughs> it's... <laughs> it's just funny. I mean, that stuff happens. I mean, I like to think that I would have an opportunity to drop the ball before the uh, goal line on national TV, but I've never had that opportunity. Right. But... Yeah, the Broncos. Yeah, that's right. You're all Broncos, Rockies, Avalanche. Uh, Excuse me, uh, just one second here. Oh, you got a phone call coming in? No, no, no. <laughs> I've got a phone call coming in. <laughs> Is the 800 number ringing? You putting a sock on? What are you doing over there? Oh, geez. <laughs> um. Anyway. Jeez. Oh, Is it? See you. <laughs> so, <laughs> look how American I am. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say what. There's nothing. I mean, that's not football, right? It's American football. Do you still call it American football? Well, no, you refer to it as football. You've been here long enough. Yeah. You don't say American. I've been here long enough to be indoctrinated. Yeah. Good. So, were you one of the guys going down to downtown Denver and uh, basically uh, took down this, the was it the Joe Flacco signs that we were all. Um, I was not down there, unfortunately. I was uh, preparing for my 3 a.m. interview with Hank. Aw. That's, oh, that's cool. All right. What time is Oh, I got to... See, now I'm all corporate. I got I got, I got, got an hour. I got, <laughs> I got a meeting I got to go to here. You know, I, and I, then these meetings are meetings that I set. You're all grown up. That's what it is. I know. I was like, let me get you on my calendar, and uh, we can talk about this. We can liaise. Someone actually used the word liaise. Um, there you go. Not, not at URS, but says we'll have to liaise later. I, oh, I like that. <laughs> I've enjoyed liaising with you. Um, I think I be. think it's good that we communicated today. <laughs> all right. So let's just summarize. So uh, Steve, happy at Telenav. Um, refuses to answer what Telenav means, the name. Um, shakes his head. Um, Map Club, join now. Tell your friends. Yeah, free T-shirt with purchase. Yeah, and for okay. limited time, be a founder. Yeah, oh, does that get you get a little tag somewhere? Right, because that's going to go away. When we, you know, assuming it succeeds, it won't always be founders. Ooh, so there you go. If you want to be a founder, if you want to say, Joe Mapper, founder, Map Club, now's your time. Four four bucks a month gets you to be a founder, right? Right. No, you don't have to be a pro member. Um, what else we say? Um, doing a resume app. Sounds great until you actually deploy it. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, uh, you know, trying most things sounds great until you actually try it. Yeah, uh, I love North Dakota. Looking forward to to going up there. Uh, Cheyenne does have an airport, as someone actually texted me to remind me that Cheyenne does have an airport. Um, sorry, I was I didn't mean to infer that Wyoming was not a state. Uh, I think that's what we covered. Good. It's been fun, James. Yeah, it has been. I appreciate it, and hopefully everybody will check out uh, Map Club and uh, let you know what you're doing great and what you're not doing great. All feedback welcome, of course. Of right? course. Of course. Awesome. Well, thanks, everybody. I will actually probably not have a Hangout next week because I will be traveling, but I'm going to try and get these back every other week. So we'll see who's around next next two weeks. Next doesn't sound right. Bi-monthly? I don't know. Oh, well. Oh, someone said you have a No Shaw Moreno Jersey. I don't even know who anybody is on Denver. Yeah, I can't see it. No, you, you didn't. That was not really an effort of turning around and showing us your back. You kind, you kind of like, look here, see my. Yeah, okay, we saw it. Beautiful. All right, everybody, have a great weekend. And uh, I guess the people at State of the Map are asleep right now. No, they're drinking. Probably drinking. drinking. Yeah, drinking. So they'll watch this later, I'm sure, to uh, see what you have to say about the organization, but have a great have a great weekend everybody. Take care. Bye bye.